what is going on y'all it is good old sunday and it is time to clean up and prepare for the week so last week i wasn't able to actually get to my truck and do some cleaning up because i was out of town my sister she got married it was a nice wedding had to be in miami florida and i love the weather it was awesome felt good to be home got to see some family all that good stuff but anywho i didn't make it back sunday to prepare myself for the week I actually got back Monday, which I had a route to run, and I ran my full route. I worked till about 5 o'clock. I got about 17 accounts knocked out. It was an awesome day, beautiful day. I was dirt tired at the end of Monday, but I had a few hiccups that I still didn't prepare myself for at the end of the day on Monday. Um, so I had a little hiccup on Tuesday, Wednesday. But this week I got time. I'm back home, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up the truck. Um, organize everything, have everything in position to uh, go ahead and move into the week. But I got these little ear pod things. I'm not, uh, I'm a little bit of a cheapskate, you could say. I bought these from the gas station. Um, I misplaced my skull candies. Uh, I don't know where I put it at. I was working on many things within the last two weeks and I don't know where I could have possibly put them. I usually don't have them on me when I'm, uh, when I'm moving around, like far as going home and stuff, I usually keep them in the work truck, but somehow I misplaced them. You guys see I cut my hair off too. Knocked about five years off me. <laughs> I'm looking like I'm about 25, 24 now. I'm a little bit older. I actually, I just had a birthday also, like two weeks ago. Turned 31, man, 31. Uh, I feel like with age comes, I don't know. I'm the type of person, I feel like, every time I I, t I get a, a year older that, I don't know, I feel like I'm unaccomplished. Like, there's so many things that I should have accomplished by now, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel the same way. So, I don't get so excited when my birthday comes, because I feel like, oh man, I'm about to be 31, and I should be here, I should be there, but I think about this too, I, humble my, I have to think humbly and say, hey, I'm not where I was five years ago, and four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, I'm in a better place now. So sometimes you got to appreciate all the things as you get older. Be grateful for where you're at and understand that there's a lesson being learned within each year. And that's kind of how I'm looking at it. So, yes, I may still feel some type of way sometimes, but it's just a little bit of a thought process. But back to what I was saying, time to clean up. So lately, this... Uh, spool cutter that I got from Ballerine. Um, I didn't tighten up the bolt on here. And what I mean by that is this bolt right on the back side of here. Can you guys see that? Right here. There's a bolt pretty much. This is the cutter. This is the cutter piece right here. And there's a bolt on the inside of that. That's not been, it's not so tight. So when I'm trying to cut string off, which I don't do too often being that I keep the spool, uh, I keep my extra spool full pretty much with screen. I don't usually have to worry about cutting it off. Usually when I cut off, when I take this screen off of here, after I run out on my head, I use this screen. And as soon as I take this off, I try to go ahead and replenish it because I don't want to be out. And then I run out of the second screen and just didn't fill it back up. Try not to be lazy, be proactive and not have to go back to the truck. So when I get to the truck and that spool is empty, I usually refill it as soon as I can. Uh, what I'm focused on today, guys, I probably need to just clean up the nose of the truck trailer. I got the, uh, a tarp that I put back there. I got to get these buckets cleared out. I just like the space. Everything needs to be accessible. I need to be able to open it up and access whatever I need to access. Uh, I believe I got low gas inside the, uh, oh yeah, see this. This tank here, this is the extra gas can I got from, I was working on a property and one of the neighbors came out and was like, hey, you guys want a free gas can? And one of my guys picked it up, but it's one of the slim, I believe it's a five gallon. I believe it's a five gallon. It's kind of slim though, I like it. Um, versus the, the wide one, I, this is the one I was using beforehand. Um, and I don't like having to pick this one up. It's pretty wide. It's actually like my uh, sure can. But a sure can is better because it has a downspout. It makes all the difference. A 
sure can. That's my baby. My favorite gas can, which I need to get another one. This thing is worth its weight in gold. I like it, guys. If you don't have your sure can, when it comes to filling up trimmers, the mower, all you have to do is kind of lift it straight up like this here. Pull the downspout down and, you know, you fill up your machine. I like it because it's convenient and I feel like I've been filling up my machines faster, I guess. Uh, I still haven't found a, a rack for my uh, ER800. I'm just kind of holding out on that uh, just because it's pretty pricey. I believe it's about 200 bucks and I can't justify spending that just right now. I don't feel like it's going to make me money but it does uh, protect the longevity of my equipment. And I think that's a good reason for me to get it. It's just, I'm not ready to do it just yet. I'm still being uh, uh, mindful of uh, my income, my finances, what I'm spending and stuff like that. And what I'm trying to do is spend money on stuff that's actually making me money um, at the moment. Some of this stuff, it saves me time and it helps me run more efficient. And that's the reason why I purchased it. And I don't know if you guys seen, but I had this bad baby. This was my first uh, first piece of equipment that I purchased when I got into business. This is a Husqvarna uh, 128LD. I did purchase it from uh, Lowe's Home Depot. But guys, I had an issue with it where the carburetor had needed to be cleaned or changed out. My guy, uh, my mechanic that I had, he changed out the uh, carburetor for me. And then I had a, another issue to where I broke the uh, the pull, pull string, pull start. So it just had been sitting on the side of the house forever and I hadn't used it. But then I thought about it, I was like, man, I need a uh, articulating hedge trimmer. And I was about to go spend 500 bucks to do a, a hedge trimming job because I really needed something that I can extend out farther because I wasn't able to get on some hedges that were pretty tall, like some you see back here. I wasn't able to get to it so i was like i need a uh, something that's extensive and i was this close this close to going to buy me a, a hl94 uh, with the 145 degree uh, bend on it but i hold out and i was like you know what let me go replace this little uh pull start put a fresh new spark plug in it and fire up and see if i have it going and sure enough i got it going guys and i was able to spend only because i had some other uh attachments i have pretty much the edger i have a weed eater so now that extended to me to a, a backup edger a backup weed eater that i'll be able to use on the husqvarna because it has a compu system on it as you see um i kind of how the this is the extension pole right here it goes from here about there and then that's where the uh the attachment inserts but it's been more than useful and it's just going to hold me down and help me finish out this season yes i'm still considering upgrading but as of right now it's not absolutely necessary because i have what i need um instead of spending 500 bucks i went and i spent uh, i believe 80 90 bucks for the attachment piece at lowe's home depot and i was able to accomplish the job which was a 600 dollar job so I made, I made profit versus going to spend the type of money just to buy that. Like I could have did the job and then the equipment would have been paid for, but I wasn't looking to, looking to do that. I'd rather spend a hundred bucks and get the job done. Keep the expenses low, man. Be more profitable. And when the time comes, if this thing just completely taps out, that's when I go get one. Um, I, I wish I could have just used my handheld, my HS56 to do the job, but it just wasn't big enough. so. I didn't, uh, didn't, you, I used it a little bit on the smaller hedges, but for the most part, I needed something that was a little bit more extensive. Um, what else I'm doing here? But yeah, I'm gonna just clean up the floor here, guys. I don't know if I'm gonna record it because I don't wanna record pieces and bits, but I may, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and record it. I'll record it. It's just be a separate little video. Um, also, what I'm working on here today is uh, when I was working by myself about three days ago, I broke my, um, well, I didn't break it. These things typically wear off. So when it comes to F-150s, if you have an older model, I would say 2010 or older, 
Um, we have these clips that that's on the suicide doors. When you open up the door, this right here is considered a suicide door, the back door, guys, because it doesn't have a handle on it. Um, it doesn't have an outside handle that you can access, but it has a handle right here where you're able to uh, push it. This one, as you see, guys, it's broken. The door's not opening. And this, this right here happened recently, uh, literally three days ago. My driver's side, it was like that probably about four months now and I hadn't been able to get into my backs, backs right behind my driver's seat. So I went ahead, went on YouTube, of course, YouTube University, and I seen where some guys were repa repairing their, uh, the door fixture. And basically it's these pieces here, these cords, they have pretty much rubber boots on them and they deteriorate deteriorate over time like they're rubber and they just they break away so i replaced four of them one up here at the top one here at the middle part and also one inside this piece here and one behind here this handle piece i can take this off this is just something to make sure it's back working but i got it operational i got it back working and uh i'm gonna do the same thing to my other side there the piece costs eight bucks man you go to ford or something they're gonna try to charge you at least a hundred bucks or more to fix your door because it's about labor time time it takes to get that stuff done and it really it took me if i would have known what i was doing without having to watch the video and keep stopping i probably could have did it in probably 20 minutes do all of them um but you know when you go to shop prices it's a bit different they got a business to run so the prices may be a little bit more steeper it costs me uh, 10 bucks in 30 30 40 minutes and i got it all done but now i feel like i can do it in 20 minutes so teachers on if you got a uh, that problem right there with your suicide door um opening on your truck go ahead and get it fixed go on amazon um type it in on youtube uh, how to fix suicide door f-150 and there's a video that shows one i believe it says eight dollars but i think the price has changed on those little pieces since uh the guy made the video but appreciate him for leaving that because that's where i found how to fix my door and uh yeah get your doors fixed but i'm gonna go ahead and get started guys and so i'll be tightening up this um pulling the zero turn out getting all this grass and stuff out organizing stuff i may be taking a push more off and I don't know. I need to figure out another alternative, man. I got my butt whooped this week with this push mower. It's 100 degrees, 90 degrees in South Carolina. The humidity was <laughs> not a joke. And I was out busting my butt. I was solo. I had a little bit of a hiccup. My guy did not show up on me um, on an expected day to work. Two days in a row. So you can imagine how that went. Um, I had to knock out 26 accounts one day and the next day I had about 17 so it was a it was a bit of a week for me so I didn't even have him work with me none this week he worked with me when I first got back which was on Monday but then after that um, I had a little bit of a hiccup of getting him to work he had some things going on but it is what it is and sometimes you got to suck it up as a business owner and you still have to provide for the customers and they need to know that what's going on if you're late or whatever you got to get the job done because at the end of the day it's your business and it's up to you to do what you got to do to make it thrive but so i explained to the customers hey i'm running slightly behind uh, had some complications with them uh with my team so i'm actually working a bit solo so please bear with me and as long as you're communicating with customers man i've learned i've learned i've learned they will be understanding to the and wait for you versus finding somebody else to do the job and <clears throat> that's just what's been going zone um the next thing i'll be doing here this week guys i'm gonna reach out to uh i'm gonna reach out to this mechanic uh i'm over mechanic and i'm gonna have him pick up some of my mowers these are mowers that i just literally got sitting at the house this is a commercial grade uh i think it's called turf cut it's a 22 inch uh, commercial deck real old school but we got a self-propelled system on it. It actually does crank up. I just need it spruced up. Like I need, you know, the wheels operating, functioning, functioning correctly. And I also need the back tires like aired up or whatever. 
I make sure everything is just nice and tidy because it does take up a bit, bit of space, but I know it's probably worth it if it's offering a better cut than, well, not a better cut, but an inch more cut than my 21, 21 inch uh, Hustle Varners that I have. Um, this one here, guys, um, within the last two weeks, I broke the, uh, the pull string off of it while I was on the site. So I need to get that fixed. This one here, it's really just one that I blew up the motor when I first started. This is actually my first mower that I bought when I got into the business. Blew up the motor by not having enough oil in it. And now it's just being used for parts and things whenever I need it. But the body's in good shape. I'm actually thinking about taking one of these. The difference is this one here is an all wheel drive Husqvarna. This one here is a, I think a Ford wheel drive. And then the no, yeah, this all wheel. This is a uh, four wheel. And then the one I have inside my trailer right now, which has the Honda GVC engine on it, it's a rear wheel. So I don't know if the the engine has something to do with the connection to the suspension belt or anything. So I may try to use this body because the one that I have in my trailer right now, which was my second mower, it has it had a fair amount of wear on it, man, to the point where I need to get rid of the body. It's not worth trying to fix all the little parts on it that's loose like the tires uh they're starting to instead of being straight up and down when i, I notice it's being self-propelled the wheel is kind of leaning a little bit so if i'm setting it at three inches or four inches it's probably cutting a little bit lower than that um because i noticed i was scalping a little bit so i raised it up to four inches and i feel like it was cutting at three inches so the mower has i know how to use it and i've been making it work but I also know that if I'm noticing this pattern of it not working effectively for me, that it's time to take these guys off the benches and get them inside the trailer. But on the flip side, guys, I also been considering not even using any of the 21 inch push mowers. I've been trying to find a, a Toro Time Master 30 inch push mower. Um, that'll work a bit better. Yes, it's considered residential, um, but it'll cover more space. And I think it'll be worth this weight in gold. I got a buddy of mine. He has one that he used on wet days. He also has a standing unit Xmart Vantage uh, 36 inch that he used for backyards. But in situations where he can't use the Vantage, he always pull out the uh, 30 inch uh, Time Master and it gets the job done. Before that, he had a, uh, a 30 inch Xmart, which he paid, uh, I believe, a little over two grand for new but they're pretty much touring the xmart they're made by the same people and uh he said he he felt like they both uh work work great i believe the difference with uh the toro versus the the uh xmart that the the build the build is a bit different because the xmart is built for a commercial so it has a probably a thicker deck on it a little bit more durable than the time ass but as far as specs on it as far as the uh <sighs> the engine and things of that nature i believe they're very similar not not super different because they're made by the exact same people but i don't want to jump all over the place talking about this that and the third i'm gonna go ahead and get started man it is it's hot out here and uh i just want to make sure i'm getting some productivity done some getting some things done that i can give me a leg up on the week because Hey, I don't know how what's entitled. I, it may we may catch rain. It's supposed to get a hurricane that come here. I need to be prepared for a work period, and that's kind of what I'm doing today. It's Sunday, cleanup day. So I suggest you take a little bit of time and get yourself organized. Later.